you uh, for attending our venue today. We are the organizing committee from Research Energy Foundation, RSF, together with Tyler and Francis Group, F1000 Research. We want to welcome all of the participants here. Welcome to our webinar, as editor, this is the fourth edition. So within this venue, we will be discussing about uh, open access publication model in the digital era. Uh, for our Korea information, we are having already about 300 participants listed, registered from uh, many country in the world. Uh, there are uh, participants from Indonesia, Malaysia, Pakistan, Philippines, India, as well as Ecuador. Uh, please feel uh, uh, where is your country from in the chat box so I can know where are you come from. Also, thank you for coming for today and don't forget to fill the atten attendance form. Yeah, uh, for today, can you? Uh, our speaker is Mr. Barry Clark. He is managing director from Taylor and Francis in Asia Pacific. And I myself will become your moderator for today. I'm from Research Energy Institute. So our topic for today, uh, we're going to discuss open access publication model in the digital era. We want to know what is the importance of open access publication in the digital era. And also, what about F1000 publication model? Barry also will give his insight. And also, there are numerous tips to select and invite responsive reviewer in F1000 research. And I think this would be valuable for all of the ones who wants to publish in the top journals. So here are for today learning contract during this online lecturing about the session. The online lecture will be delivered by Barry Clark and all the material will be distributed to all the participants through the email if you feel necessary. And also about video and audio. All participants, please mute your audio. The host has every right to mute any participant's audio and remove who are deemed disruptive without warning. And in the end of the session, there will be Q&A session. Q&A can only be asked via Zoom chat room and moderator will manage as time available. Uh, we will also give you e-certificate by email after this session for every participant who complete the session until the end of this session. Okay, and for our outline, pardon that we late for five minutes, but there will be uh, opening by moderator and then welcoming online lecturing session and learning contract. And after this, uh, please, we will we want to have an e-group photo session. And afterward, uh, we will have 15 minutes uh, session uh, will be delivered by Ani Wahyu. And he, she is going to explain about global research ecosystem. And after that, uh, Barry Clark will give a lecture about open access publication model in digital era for 15 minutes session. And in the end, we will have Q&A and discussion. And we will close this venue at 3.30. And uh, please let me introduce myself uh, as your moderator. I'm currently working in Research Synergy Foundation as a scientific reviewer, academic paper writing coach, and managing editor. I have BAC from Institute of Technology Bandung and MSc from NUS Business School. Okay, uh, right now I want to have a e group uh, photo session. I will stop the sharing here and uh, please, for those who can, please open up your camera uh, because we want to have an e photo group session. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't know in which uh, page you are, so just keep uh, smiling. Uh, I will uh, count one, one until three, right? And then you can say cheese. Okay, okay, one, two, three, cheese. Okay, for and also for uh, second page. 
uh, open up your camera if you could. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, cheese. Okay, and then for the last page. Uh, one, two, three, cheers. Okay. Okay, uh, that's for uh, e-photo. And I will continue. I will continue. Uh, after this, uh, my friend from uh, Research Synergy Foundation will give introduction to RSF and Global Research Ecosystem. Ami, uh, already, uh, are you already here? Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Okay. okay, so the time is yours. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Asri, for uh, opening the uh, webinar today. So welcome to all of you to this webinar. Uh, I hope that everyone can get benefit from this webinar and welcome, uh, Barry. Uh, hope everything is going well. Then we can uh, share and discuss uh, something important uh, related to the open access publication. So uh, my name is Ani Wanurahmawati and I am the uh, founder and director of uh, publication in Research Media Foundation. And right now, in this uh, opportunity, I would like to give the introduction of RSF Global Research Ecosystem. Next. Okay, so if uh, you have some question re uh, related to who is or who are RSF, who are Research Media Foundation? So Research Media Foundation is a digital platform, digital social enterprise platform that focuses on the development global research ecosystem uh, towards outstanding global scholars. So we build the collaborative network among researchers, lecturers, practitioners, and etc. globally for realization of knowledge exploration and contribute more to our society. Next. Okay, uh, we start from the uh, problem, yeah, from the challenge. Uh, many researchers right now have uh, has limit, limited opportunity to access the uh, knowledge sharing medium. So, uh, okay. So, uh, as we know, especially in developing countries, we have so many limited uh, access to get the uh, journal or uh, the publication and uh, also less the opportunity to share our ideas uh, globally. So, that's why. Uh, our publication productivity also uh, not higher as the developed country, I think. And uh, the problem also comes from the managing of the journal or the international journal that are uh, not uh, as productive as the developed country, especially. And uh, this, this, uh, that's why we try to give the solution. So research and the foundation provides a comprehensive an integrated support system to create global research to create the global research uh, ecosystem to our network. So it will facilitate the process and enable scholar or researcher or academian practitioner to accelerate knowledge and contribute to our society. Next. Okay, so this is okay. So maybe uh, the admin could you please to taking care the noise. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, our infographic, uh, our global research ecosystem that consists of uh, the uh, main five ecosystems. Uh, the first one is uh, Scholar Pain. What is Scholar Pain? Scholar Pain is integrated conference management operating system that facilitates everyone who wants to uh, arrange the international conference and join as the presenter in our international conference. So uh, until now, we already get uh, more than 3,000 uh, manuscripts to be involved in the uh, conference, and then more than 750 uh, affiliations involved in our uh, international conference. So uh, this system called policy. So the next one is a research synergy institute. Research synergy institute is 
kind of the learning platform that facilitate the enhancement of the capacity of author to produce uh, scientific paper, to increase, to enhance the capacity of the uh, quality of the research. So until now, uh, research and again institute uh, facilitated more than 60 workshops and more than 10 coaching uh, involved more than uh, 30, 13,000 scientific uh, participants to our uh, event. Include this webinar, yeah. This webinar also uh, arranged by the, uh, technically by the uh, Research Media, uh, Institute because this webinar uh, has uh, the purpose to share the information or the knowledge about the open access publication model. And then uh, the next is the reviewer track. What is reviewer track? Reviewer track is the kind of the review hub platform. Uh, we facilitate all the scientific process, all the scientific activities of the reviewing paper, uh, both in Polofin uh, or Research Media Institute and also Research Media Press, in a review platform called a reviewer track. Right now, uh, we uh, already uh, proceed uh, more than 3,000 manuscripts and then involve more than 1,300 1, uh, uh, reviewers involved in our reviewer track. And then uh, the next is the research synergy press. Research synergy press is our publishing platform. Right now, we already published uh, 14 journals and also uh, many of proceedings. Uh, some of the journals already indexed in the DOAD and uh, some other index, international indexing. And uh, this year, we will try to submit all our journals to the uh, Scopus for indexing. And then the last but not the least is the F1000 research as our gateway. Uh, we have the official gateway with F1000 research and the gateway uh, accept or facilitate uh, the uh, multidisciplinary research field and it's already indexed in the scopus. Okay, next. Okay, so uh, this is how we are trying to create the value and impact. So we, uh, the Research Energy Foundation born by the problem. <laughs> We try to give the solution and give the impact to our society, especially uh, society and also our uh, scholars. So this is uh, what we are trying to uh, fulfill or uh, finding the gap uh, between the higher education and also uh, uh, minimize the gap between the editor and also author, the editor requirement and also the author capacity and etc. Okay, okay, this is one of the uh, how we uh, uh, keep the integrity uh, to keep the scientific process or to keep the scientific activities behind the conference and behind uh, all of pub uh, journal publishing. So this is the process of uh, review uh, of the conference. Uh, there are some of stage of the review, process of the plagiarism using search in and then second phase uh, using the reviewer track, consists of the uh, uh, content review and if the plagiarism under 20%, it can be passed uh, to the review. Uh, uh, however, if uh, it's above 20%, we will give back to the uh, participant and they have to revise it. And then after that, the reviewer can uh, choose some of the options, uh, both rejection or minor or major revision. Next. Okay, this is, okay, a previous slide, please. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, our uh, schedule of the international conference in 2021. So if you are uh, interested uh, to join our international conference, we have uh, many conference, not only uh, organized by RSF uh, on sale, but also RSF and uh, partnering with the university. 
in uh, Malaysia, in Thailand, and also in Indonesia. So this is some of the uh, international conference in the field of the social science, medical and health studies, uh, and then about the halal and also tourism, and also the uh, government and compliance and etc. So please do uh, visit the website www.researchradio.org slash upcoming conference to get things now about our international conference. Next. Okay, this is the uh, information or the explanation about the, uh, how the problem of uh, uh, outdoor right now, why the, the productivity is like. Because uh, we found some gap uh, between editorial requirement and also the outdoor capacity. Uh, of this, of some of the root of problem, yeah. Uh, outer mindset, for example, and also the uh, capacity of the language, uh, research quality, and also content packaging, and uh, the last one is about the cost or article processing stuff. So uh, this gap. Uh, we have to uh, have, we have to find the solution to minimize this gap. Uh, that's why the Sustainable Institute focuses on enhancing and increasing the capacity of author to minimize that gap. Not only about the language or research quality, we also train. We also share about how to change the mindset into the positive mindset to publish the paper to be a good scholar or to be a good researcher. This one is uh, some of the example of the portfolio of the research uh, press. So right now we have uh, 14 journals in our uh, publishing platform uh, in different area of the research, education, social science, management, sustainability studies, and then uh, methodology uh, journal, and then uh, creative uh, entrepreneurship, and also tourism. So please to visit the website www.researchfilmpress.com. Next. This is uh, how we manage the journal, not only uh, RSF journal, but also the journal uh, collaboration between RSF and the university partner. So we have the target to submit the journal into the focus indexing in three years. So uh, from the beginning, we set the target, we set the criteria, we set the requirement of the focus or website of, of science uh, uh, indexing, and then we manage the journal as well as the requirement itself. So that's why uh, from the from the beginning, the journal from RSF has the diversity of authors, the diversity of editorial and reviewer. And also, we keep on quality on the readability of the uh, paper in the journal. So this is uh, what we call the roadmap of strategy uh, of the journal management. Right? Okay, this is the some of the example of the uh, our procedures. Uh, some of them are collaboration with the uh, CRC Balkema, Solar and Francis, and another we publish by our own published by the Research Synergy Press. Right? Okay, this is uh, one F1000 research. I uh, slightly to explain this because Barry will explain in detail about this. What, what I'm uh, going to say is about announcing the F1000 research RSS gateway. So next. Okay, this is our gateway. So you can find me as one of the gateway advisors beside Dr. Henretti, Dr. Henretti also here. Uh, and also Ms. Santi as the gateway advisor. So this gateway accept the multidisciplinary research field. So for everyone that uh, has the uh, research in the space of social science, business management, and then engineering, medical studies, and etc., you can join. You can submit the paper uh, to the F1000 uh, research. Of course, you uh, join our program because. The RSS uh, gateway is open for all the members that join in RSS program. Next. Okay, uh, next. Because uh, this will explain by Barry, I think. Okay, this is our uh, partner. So by this uh, session, I would like to invite all of you, your university, to join 
as the RSS member, as the RSS network, and uh, together we uh, share the benefit to uh, our uh, scholar and also our lecturer and uh, our uh, researcher. So uh, welcome to uh, RSS uh, family. Welcome to RSS uh, member. Uh, please to contact us through the website or the email or the Facebook and Instagram to get uh, more detailed information about how to join as the RSS member. Next. Okay, so this is, I think, the last uh, slide. Uh, Mitasi, could you please to play the music? Huh? The music in this slide. Okay. Uh... Okay. Okay, so welcome to all of you to uh, Research Legal Foundation family, Research Legal Foundation member. Uh, please enjoy this webinar and see you again on the next occasion. Thank you so much. Back to you, Miss Astri. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Ani, uh, for uh, valuable sharing. And for the next session, we will have Barry Clark, uh, Mr. Barry, or are you here already? Yes, I am. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Berry is managing director in Tyler and Francis Asia Pacific, and he will have fifty minutes uh like lecture. But uh, before that, let me introduce him. Barry grew up in Norwich, England, and while he's at Norwich School, he represents the country of Norfolk in athletics. And Barry also went on to study natural sciences at Pembroke College, Cambridge University, wow, taking zoology in the final year. Since 1998, he has guided the growth of Taylor and Francis in the region as managing a director of the Asia Pacific Headquarter. He is uh, running offices in Sydney, Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong, Beijing, Taipei, Tokyo, and Seoul. And also, this is a uh, numerous his professional that he is so he is present China Book International Advisor board member. He also presented a Singapore University of Social Sciences Bachelor of Honor in Visual Communication with Business as a program advisory committee chairman. And also, this is a list about his professional duties. He has been a Tomasek Polytechnic guest lecturer. Also, he is also active in Singapore Book Publisher Association as EXCO member. Uh, also as STM intensive courses on journal publishing as a tutor. Also, he is active at CLASS, Copyright Licensing at Amin Society of Singapore as a director and committee member. As his professional courses, he is active in INSEED, in the Asian International Executive Program in Beijing, also in Be Safe. A workshop for CEO health and safety in the workplace. So, Mr. Barry, I will stop uh, my sharing screen and you might uh, share your presentation. Sure, I will do that. And uh, thank you for the introduction and sharing my CV. Okay. Now, the qualification I'm most proud of is the, um, the qualification for biz health, ensuring that my staff well and safe in the office. Um, I never thought I'd say that, but that's a very important part of what I do um, nowadays with COVID. So let me share my screen. Um, thank you to everybody. Um, and Namaste and Abakabad. Uh, I think we have people from many places on the call. So let me just try and share my screen. System is being a little bit slow. But I think you can now see my screen. Uh, let me just go to the right mode. 
Okay. So please confirm you've got the first uh, slide, open access publishing in the digital era. Is that correct? Yes, terrific. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ashri, for the opportunity and Sani for inviting me again. Thank you. So I'll talk a little bit about, uh, very briefly about Taylor and Francis and what we do, and uh, then talk a little bit about open access and the importance of open access, uh, which is the journey that most scholars find themselves on nowadays. And I will then focus on the very special features of the RSF gateway that has been built in collaboration with one of our units, F1000. Um, so let me start. So who are we first? Some of you may know of Taylor and Francis Routledge, but we are in the publishing industry. And the key point is that what publishers do is we curate the very best of research and then help scholars bring it to other scholars' attention and to the market generally. We follow something called the Oldenburg Principles. I'd love to spend a few minutes talking about that, but we really don't have time. Basically, principles laid down more than 350 years ago when scientific publishing started are still guiding our philosophy today. Um, but what we do today is really about framing, helping you frame your research format using technology to get the, re the best format, whether it be print or digital, into other scholars' hands. Of course, publishing is about dissemination, and that's a key part of what we do, the dissemination of research, marketing and sales for big companies like Taylor & Francis is very much part of what we bring to, to your um, advantage. And we also have a lot of support services, ensuring that your research is discovered, is visible, um, ensuring that audiences are engaged, after sales service, if you like, after after sales support, after publishing support. Um, that photograph obviously was taken pre-pandemic at a book launch here in Singapore. It's the kind of thing that we love to do whenever we get the chance. And we've been doing this for a long time, um, not myself. Um, I've been with the company about 23 years, but the company was founded over 200 years ago. And we're very proud of our tradition of publishing through the ages. Um, we are one of the largest publishers with 8,000 new books published under Routledge and CRC Press. I hope some of you may be our, are our authors um, under those two imprints. Um, you're welcome to submit a full length manuscript if you feel that you have a book in you. We're very happy to hear from you. And journal publishing, which is where we started. We use several imprints, Taylor and Francis Routledge in particular, over 2,700 are published by the group and most recently we have open access publishing under cogent dove press which is primarily a medical publisher and then f1000 we acquired about 18 months two years ago and i'll go on to explain how that acquisition how the publishing model that they brought to tell and francis has helped develop the rsf gateway that i'll talk about in more detail in a minute so I want to just spend a few minutes talking about open access. I'm sure everyone on this webinar has heard of open access and you've probably published open access, but I just want to be absolutely certain that we do have the basics right. So what is open access? Um, open access makes published academic research freely available and permanently available. So anyone anywhere can read and build upon this research and one might add at any time in the future. So it is a new business model. Well, maybe almost 20 years old actually, arguably, um, but it's something that we've now embraced totally, even as a traditional subscription-based publisher, everything that we do is now increasingly around the trend towards open research, open science, open access. In a nutshell, these are the four key um, advantages. It increases your discoverability, creates an impact beyond academia, and you can freely share the work 
And in some cases, it's vital to comply with funder mandates. I'll talk about these in just a touch more detail. Increasing discoverability in the use of real research, that is usually a driving motivation for researchers. Um, if it's published open access, your research will be available anywhere on the planet at any time. And that greater visibility will increase readership and hopefully citations. And that can help, of course, with your career and maybe your funding prospects too. We all want to have an impact and research is a great way of ensuring that impact helps society progress. Um, and it's not just you're going to be able to reach new readers, but you'll be able to reach readers who've got access to institutional research libraries, but also probably meeting the needs of policymakers um, in government and maybe in non-government organizations, NGOs, and certainly reaching educators, the media, practitioners, um, and even members of the public. So the key point is open access provides you with a way of reaching a much wider community. And it's free to share anywhere. Of course, there are still copyright restrictions on what people can do with your research. It can't plagiarize, for example, but the key point is that there's no paywall to be able to access your research. And this creates many more opportunities um, to reuse the research, to validate it, and to help you build up a network of people in a similar field. And this is particularly important in some parts of the world, um, notably Europe, but increasingly in Asia and America. Mandates are beginning to be formulated um, certainly in Japan, uh, in China, there are discussions around formulating mandates that any research funded by a government body, say the Japan Science and Technology Agency, or in Singapore, the Academy of uh, Sciences, or ASTAR as we call them, the Agency for Science, Technology and Research, ASTAR, they have mandates. So any research funded by the agency must be published open access. And this is a growing trend. And we provide ways of publishing by satisfying those mandates. So open research is the movement to open all outputs of scholarly activity. But it's important to note, it's not just the article, it's also the data behind the article, maybe computer coding, um, perhaps protocols um, and other material also is increasingly that needs to be um, made available. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment. And Taylor and Francis were absolutely committed to enabling the sustainable open research initiatives that are still evolving around the world. Open research is still a relatively new idea, part of the sharing economy that um, we, we talk so much about now especially in the pandemic. The importance of sharing will be critical as we come out of this pandemic. And we are committed to supporting this trend. So these are the areas I've mentioned a couple already. Um, open access, open data, very important that the data is available to be interrogated by other scholars, open source software perhaps, techniques, methods, methodology, and also increasingly of interest is the idea that the peer review process, peer review is, is central to our integrity as a publisher. Everything we have ever published has been reviewed by peers. So it is really validated, authenticated. But the idea of having open peer review is still relatively new. And this model, the F1000 RSF gateway is actually a very new model that takes advantage of open peer review. And I'll come to that now, because now I'd like to talk about the F1000 research and the RSF gateway that we have built together. Excuse me. So F1000 
is a, a digital native company. It was founded in 2013 uh, by a lady called Rebecca Lawrence. And its mission was to rethink and recast the scholarly communication system to really speed up the sharing of research and improve transparency, to reduce barriers. And, and some of those barriers, everyone in, in Asia Pacific will be more familiar with, um, as I have been living in Singapore for 30 years, there are really some barriers to getting published in publishing houses which are dominated by Western companies like Taylor and Francis. So F1000 was formed partly to reduce the barriers to getting your research published, but without compromising some of the very important aspects of what we've always done for hundreds of years. Um, so I've jumped on a little bit too quickly. Let me see if I can go back. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we want to report basic scientific and scholarly uh, research, clinical research too, um, in all subject areas. Life sciences is where open access, open science started, life sciences, medicine, but now open research is considered part of engineering um, and even social sciences and humanities are now looking at research publishing. When we talk about the outputs, we're not just talking about articles, we're talking about, as I say, data, software tools, but also posters and other um, notes that perhaps are critical to the understanding of the research. And all of that builds up to a better communication of that research and builds capacity across the world. And my slides won't move forward, let me just try again. Okay, so we have already developed partnerships with many institutions around the world because this trend to open science is one that we've been following and F1000 has been very much part of the development. We do the platforms, the publishing platforms for the Wellcome Trust, for example, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, and several others on that slide, including RSF there in the corner. And also, I'd just like to highlight a couple of others, University of Tsukuba in Japan. We have a particularly close relationship with that institution, and we're happy to work with institutions on an institutional basis. And also at the other extreme, the European Commission, one of the biggest providers of funds through the Horizon 2020 funding projects, the European Commission uses the F1000 platform as their publishing platform. Um, scholars using European funds do not have to publish on that platform, but it's a great outlet for a great number of, of scholars that have funding from Europe to find an outlet. So these are just some of the many relationships we have, and we're very proud that RSF were actually the first in Asia Pacific to be, um, to be a partner. So thank you very much for that vision. So what is the Gateway? It's an open hub for publishing research. I think I've covered some of this already, so I'll be very brief on this slide. One of the key points is that rather like a, a pre-press publishing opportunity, um, pre-print pre publishing opportunity, but one of the key points is that we have post-publication peer review, and that's very transparent. Um, everything we do, as I say, is peer reviewed, and authors have a chance to help us find those peer reviewers. I've got quite a few slides about finding good reviewers later on. And everything that we do eventually publish that gets through the process of being um, um, approved is then indexed in Scopus and PubMed and other indexing houses. And of course, one of the things that's often forgotten about in terms of the importance of publishing, and that is your research is preserved it really will be preserved for generations to come. And as I've hinted at, it's not just um, 
articles, but there's other kinds of publishing that we can do. Outputs like training reports, funding reports, posters, um, slide, uh, slide decks, for example, all of that can be published on the platform. So it's not jumping forward, so let me use the button. Very good. So the RSF gateway has all these features embedded in the publishing platform. But it really does provide a venue for the dissemination of ideas, um, from, as I say, an increasingly diverse range of scholars, especially reaching out to this part of the world. And it does build on the excellent work um, of your peers um, around the world. It offers an innovative open science platform. Um, as I say, many people are still thinking in terms of journals and traditional ways of publishing, which I should stress will continue. We're not throwing out journal publishing. Um, there's many societies, many scholars around the world that like the very traditional way of publishing and that will be preserved um, as long as people want it. But increasingly there is a need a demand for more innovative open science platforms and RSF provide that opportunity. So what's really different? It's very fast. Um, we aim for seven days in terms of turnaround time. Um, but that's critically important to speed up the ways that we can find to get research published. Um, especially in crises like the pandemic, you need to be able to very quickly get good research. Yes, it's got to be peer reviewed, it's got to be validated, but it's very important to get good research out quickly because it could literally save lives. It's also very important that we are more inclusive. All research outputs are suitable, let's say, protocols and data sets. And something I haven't yet mentioned before, negative results, null results. Um, traditionally, if experiments don't work, if results are negative, um, that's the end of the story. Well, actually, there may be some benefit in, in ensuring that even negative results find um, an output so that people can see exactly. Uh, Barry, sorry, uh, could you stabilize your voice? I think. Um, I will try, but clearly there may be some background interference. Ah. Okay. Thank you for pointing that out. I'll try and uh, slow down perhaps as well. Yeah. Am I speaking too fast? Please do let me know. Uh, no, 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 no. It's okay. I think it's just uh, that your uh, voice is not stable. Okay. Okay, let me uh, continue, but thank you. So we want to be inclusive, fully open, of course, so that everyone has, can have access to the results I've already explained. And another point I haven't mentioned, but increasingly in science, the idea that the research should be reproducible is very important. Um, and that's why the data must be published at the same time as the article, so that scholars can really understand how the experiment or how the research was working or how the, um, the data was collected. Um, so it's very important that you for, provide a way of getting that data um, available. And indeed, many institutions and funding bodies are looking at data management policies. They're reviewing that um, as I speak. And another key point, which I've mentioned a couple of times, and that is the transparency, the transparency of an author-led publishing um, program with open and transparent peer review. And I've got some slides that begin to explain how that works in a moment. So the aims and scope of the gateway, the RSF gateway, is to publish original research, including review articles, analytical reports, and case studies, um, but also posters, slides, and other kinds of documents. That material doesn't have to be peer reviewed. So what needs to be peer reviewed is the main article. Other material does not need to be peer reviewed. The Gateway publishes across all research areas. As I said, research in the open access methodology started in biosciences and medicine, but increasingly 
uh, other subjects, engineering, social sciences, economics, um, business, um, even history and the arts, you're increasingly moving towards finding ways of doing open access publishing. And of course, RSF, um, the relationship with RSF started on the back of the fact that they organized many conferences. And this is a great way to, to get research um, configured and submitted and discussed. And again, this is a great way that we can help to get proceedings or conference um, submissions published if it goes through all the critical not the, 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 the ways of, of analyzing and checks that the research is indeed up to scratch and uh, of a good standard. But conferences are a key part of the channels of communication for scholars. And we see this as a very important part of what RSF and F1000 can do for you. So I've got a few slides that, goes, that go into the process in a little more detail. And as I said, I've used this word before, preprints. Some of you will be familiar with preprints. There are many organizations that do preprints. Um, F1000, if you like, is a combination of preprints and a journal-like model. So in a nutshell, once an article, a piece of work is submitted, um, open access is the desired outcome, there are checks that are done ensure that the um, material that you're submitting has gone through the basic um, procedures so that we can uh, check that there's no obviously concerns around plagiarism, that the scientific institution, the institution is a legitimate institution, that you are a legitimate author. Um, ethical um, issues do come up all the time in, in publishing. And so it's very important that before an article is accepted, that there's some basic checks are done. And we also do have to make sure that the article is, is readable, that there's a, a basic standard of English. You know, this is an English language platform um, and that it is at least readable to an audience. Um, so these checks have to be done um, and it's very crucial that they're done as quickly as possible. So we try and do this quickly and RSF have a great team to help with this process. And it's very, very much in your own interests that these checks are done, um, because there's no point in just putting out their research, which is poor, it's got to be validated to a certain degree. So these checks are absolutely critical. Assuming that they go through these checks and everything is passed, then we will post, we will publish the article on the platform. So it is then available, it is discoverable, and indeed even citable, um, but it won't be indexed. Only after the process peer review is an article ever indexed. So this is the next stage when the article is peer reviewed. We have at least two, sometimes three peer reviewers. They are invited to review the particular article. Um, and what happens is that the reviewers will give one of three um, responses after reviewing the article. They'll either say, yes, it's passed. No, it's definitely no good at all. It's just not original or it's a poor quality. Or, and a lot of articles get this uh, um, you know, uh, feedback from the reviewer. Um, it will be approved, but with reservations. So the question mark, implies that the article is basically good, but there are some concerns which need to be addressed. So the reviewer and the author, you will have a discussion around what those reservations, what those concerns are. And then there may be another version of the article submitted, and that version will be made available forever, transparently available, um, until such time when at least two um, approves are given um, and only then will everything be indexed so that um, your material will then be published in the more traditional way, but open access. 
And that's the key point. The fee for publishing is only charged at that point. And then, as I say, your material is available, open access. And the key point is that the whole process has been transparent. There's no black boxes in this process. So hopefully that's clear. And if there's any questions later on, um, I'd be happy to try and answer any questions that we have around that process. But here you can see an example of an article that has um, been submitted. And the first version, if you can see, has got a question mark and a tick. So one reviewer was happy, but one, correct, one reviewer was not sure. So it went to a version two after some feedback and some maybe corrections or some additional data. And then the second reviewer was happy. So two ticks, yes, reviewer status means that the article fully published. But as I say, even before that process, if the article passes the basic checks, it is available on the platform. It's just not fully indexed and therefore um, not considered peer review published. And we have metrics, of course, everyone is looking at metrics now in various ways, and uh, all this is available on the hub as well. So you can very quickly see exactly what kind of impact your research is beginning to have around the world. And as I say, there are not just articles that can be published, um, there's different fees for different kinds of material. Not all this material goes through the peer review process, but your posters, slide decks, and documents, if that's important to you to be published and made available to scholarly communities, then this platform provides that option. So I hope that's clear. And as I say, we can look at that again in the, under the question and answers phase later on. Um, but I've got now a few slides on hints and tips for selecting reviewers because we are able to recommend reviewers for your article and some of you um, will be in a position to do that. So just to emphasize that this is an author-led system, author-led peer review at F1000. So authors, you should be ready to suggest suitable reviewers immediately after publication for that second part of the process, the peer review process. We have an editorial team that will assess the suitability of reviewers, of course. We must validate that they are real reviewers and, and not brother-in-law, although your brother-in-law may well be a, 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 a very good academic, so that will be fine. But, um, but we want to be certain that the reviewer is uh, legitimate. Um, and then we can invite the reviewers on your behalf. And of course, we have a pool of reviewers We've been in publishing a long time, so we can recommend reviewers to you as well. So what makes a qualified, um, what makes a good reviewer? Well, clearly qualification is, is important, um, typically a doctorate, but in some areas that's not necessarily, more practitioner areas, PhD would not be absolutely necessary. Education, like the science is mentioned, counseling might be another. So you can ask the editorial team for guidance about the kind of reviewer that you're looking for. Um, generally, they have to be an expert in the field and that might go without saying, but um, by expert, we might mean that they've already published articles, not necessarily with us, but in an um, internationally recognized journal. Um, and those articles would be considered to be needed to be fairly current. Within, published within the last three to five years. Um, not all areas, subjects uh, sort of validated through the usual publication record. So again, there can be flexibility um, around these criteria, but that's the general situation relating to the era. And clearly qualified being expert, yes, but being impartial only that will guarantee that the research is, is really legitimate. So reviewers should not have any competing interests, no bias that uh, could sway their decision. So they should be close collaborators. Um, um, so 
a reviewer, for example, should not be a co-author. If you submit a paper, there's no point in asking your co-author to be a reviewer. Um, certainly not a co-author has published review in the last two or three years. Very sorry. Uh, could you uh, move closer to your laptop? I think your your, yes, your okay. voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think your voice is uh, sometimes I missing. I hope you've been hearing me. So thank you. So currently, um, we generally don't want reviewers to work at the same institution. So some different institution, uh, and you should be too close to collaborate. So we understand that in some areas, the field is very, very small. The research is a very small ecosystem, but nevertheless, we would ask you to try and be diverse um, in your choice of reviewers. Um, if you've got any, again, concern, the editorial team will be happy to try and support your choice and your selection of reviewers. And I've hinted at this just now, but you know, the more international we are as a publisher, the more international your research is. Nowadays, that gives it certain kudos and validity. So yes, we do require reviewers from different institutions and even from different countries that would be much preferred to get a good international perspective. And again, our editorial team will be happy to provide suggestions for reviewers in other locations if you're if you're having trouble. So do make sure the reviewer that you select meet these criteria: qualified, expert, impartial, and global. We do have a reviewer finder tool which you're welcome to use, um, but do double check do a sense check of, uh, of the reviewer that is recommended. Um, systems are all well and good, but please do use common sense as well. And do look at authors of works you have cited. Um, that's qu quite fine. You, your research will automatically be um, referencing many, many other pieces of work. I think, as Eaton said, we all stand on the shoulder, sho shoulders of, of so shoulders of giants, forgive me. Um, so authors that you have cited are uh, sometimes make very good reviewers. And do perform keyword searches. Um, there's lots of databases out there, PubMed, Web of Science, and you may well find authors working in your field by doing a simple search. Um, institutions and departments prominent in your field, that's a very good rich source of potential reviewers. Um, so do make use of the uh, websites of institutions. And don't give up, it's a, it's a tough, getting reviewers is, is increasingly challenging. Um, around the world, publishing companies are finding it more and more difficult to find reviewers. Um, part of the problem, of course, is the recognition of the review process, which is something that leads that it's not that's not fully developed yet. There are organizations that are working on that, trying to give some kudos, literally kudos to reviewers. Generally, it's considered part of the publishing process, part of the scientific and scholarly uh, ecosystem that you do review your, your peers' research. Again, that's something that we've been involved in for literally hundreds of years. So there's some tips and hints for finding a reviewer of your research. Um, I hope that's clear. I'm sorry if uh, connection is not, not perfect, um, but hopefully you've uh, got what I was saying and we can go into the question and answer session. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank, yeah, thank you very much, Billy. Uh, and I will continue sharing my presentation. Okay, uh, there will be uh, some people, some participants uh, chat in the chat box. There are some questions, like uh, the first one is, I would like to consider the publishing in the open access, but how about uh, the quality in this open access? Since, uh, I think maybe the, the, the participant thinks that uh, F1000 could include 
many di very diverse uh, knowledge field and how how about the quality that that is the first one uh, so maybe you want to ask first sure. It's so, sure. so, yeah I'm very happy to talk about quality in the open access world um i've been in publishing for 30 years so when i started in publishing open access was not at all a word that uh, a term that we were familiar with and in the early days there were concerns that open access was equated with lower quality research there definitely was that concern amongst publishers amongst the scientific scholarly community those concerns have now gone um, i assure you that now open access is the way that quality research is increasingly published especially in, in many fields biosciences medicine etc there are still concerns um, around quality of what gets published in the open access world. Why? Because unfortunately, we have a phenomenon that we call predatory publishing. That is where organizations know that researchers have to publish, know that they're getting funds to publish. Funders are sometimes making funds available to for article processing charges. And so they set themselves up as a pretend publisher. And yes, they may accept your research and they won't do the checks. They won't do basic checks. They won't do proper peer review and they will not then publish your material in a, on a platform that is discoverable, that is indexed. So, but they have taken your research money and basically disappeared. So there is a concern that there is an area of open access which is being controlled by predatory publishing. And that's why we ask all researchers to really think, check before they submit any research to a publisher. Make sure you do your homework, that the publisher is legitimate. Taylor and Francis, we have many publishers in our ecosystem, Wiley, Elsevier, Cambridge University Press, some of these publishers are competitors, but we are all now collaborators in many, many respects, because we all believe that the importance of sharing and getting material, getting content, getting research published, we all, we all have that motivation. So you're right to be concerned about quality, but I guarantee um, that quality is no longer an issue as long as you choose a good reputable publisher. So the F1000 team is now part of Taylor and Francis. They're working with people like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Wellcome Trust, the European Commission, RSF, other institutions. European Union would not sign a contract with the F1000 team if it wasn't the highest quality of process and output. So Hopefully that's addressed your concerns around quality. Okay. Okay, thank you very much so about the quality since it is come from Tyler and Francis, they are renew renewable publisher. So I think uh, the, the quality also will be guaranteed to be good. Lah. And about the second one, is this open access journal publication free? as they are free to be used? Uh, how about uh, what is you, you're, you're addressing this question, Barry? Well, of course, the word free is, is problematic, to be honest. Um, open access, um, in a way, does not mean free access because there has to be a cost recognized in the process. So open access, the way that the cost is recognized is in the APC, the article processing charge. If I may just go back a moment to the old system, the system that Taylor and Francis started in 1798, we had a journal we published a journal and then a library would subscribe to that journal. So the publishing was completely no charge. Articles were submitted and we did the peer review and then we published, but then access was chargeable to, to the institution. So the access was charged. Now in open access, we don't charge for the access, it's open, but the word free is not used because there is a fee in the submission of the research. So the funder, 
provides, in the ideal world, the funder provides some funding for the research to be published. There's an article publishing charge, which varies from journal to journal, from publisher to publisher. Sometimes there's discounts, special ways of getting um, research published. Not usually free, there's always got to be a publishing charge because the process has a cost. But once the, the article has, has gone through those, those checks, those ethical checks, those checks before um, the peer review process, and once the article then has gone through the peer review process, the access is free. So anyone in the world can access that article. You do a Google search and it will be available. Okay. So that because we want to open to all the readers so, so that uh, we are a researcher can disseminate our knowledge uh, uh, freely uh, so that uh, yes, the, yeah, yeah, that, 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 there is a con consequence that we must pay some fee here. And also uh, for the next question, how long can a research, researcher wait for his article to be published and indexed in an open access journal? So for publish, if you actually, if you uh, complete the checklist from RSF and you are uh, good in pre-publication pace, it's just uh, like seven days in average. But how about uh, being indexed very here? So uh, basically we have to get a check, approve, approve uh, status from our reviewer. So do you, do you have, a, have a, any system to make sure that uh, the reviewer uh, really review our our manuscript because usually in not in open access journal usually uh, they can uh, takes a long long time even in some journal I hear this yes. two years here yeah, two years and even six years it's crazy right and how about here in F1000 yes. I mean well there are indeed extreme cases of, of articles not seeing the light of day for, for many years you're absolutely right um, and there is a challenge because we, no one has enough reviewers. Um, we are working on artificial intelligence and other ways of doing reviews. Um, but at the moment, we are dependent upon peers and, and experts, as I, as I clarified in my earlier slides. In terms of the length of the time um, it takes, I mean, it varies tremendously. What I would say is that it has got quicker in, in my time in publishing, it's got generally on average much quicker. Um, I confess I can't give you um, details because I honestly don't know them, but my guess is that anything can be, so I know some articles get published within days. That's very unusual. Um, I would have thought it's mostly weeks to running into two or a couple of months. I would have thought that's generally the average. Um, I think if, if an article, is not published and indexed after six months, then something clearly needs, needs addressing. In this day and age, five, six months is quite a long time in, in getting published once you know, the basic checks are done. But in some subjects, it is a big challenge to find enough reviewers. So one, if I may take advantage of the question and, and turn it around, if there are people out there that are, are willing to be reviewers, then you know, please do step forward to the RSF team. Um, you, you can be recorded as a potential reviewer and you can be part of the solution um, if you wish. And it would be good for your career too um, and helping to reduce that time frame. Okay. Okay, thank you. So the, the answer is uh, put, uh, different from one article to another article. It can be weeks to a couple of months. And then for the last question, what are the major factors that could lead to the paper being rejected or to be published in F1000 research? And how many steps are there in the review process? Okay, um, embedded in this question is actually a whole presentation that I could give, um, giving tips about how to get published and explaining what are many reasons why articles do get rejected um, and how to increase your chances of being accepted. 
Um, and I, I'm tempted to say, you know, we should offer that as a presentation, actually. Um, and Taylor and Francis, we not only have resources on our website about how to get published, tips on getting published, and perhaps the RSF team, perhaps we can ensure that some of those resources are made available through, through yourselves, because it's fairly, a fairly common message. Um, but equally, you know, we are working on full-blown seminars, which we are considering you know, running to two, three hours, which we would charge for to give you, the researcher, really a watertight way of, of ensuring that your article has every best chance of being published. So it's, a, it's actually, as I say, I could spend a couple of hours or at least certainly half an hour on this one question. But the, the, the range of ways in which papers do get rejected, being from the language being you know, not good enough for English, not clear enough, um, the protocols not being clearly explained, um, the data being contradictory, um, references not being there. Um, and then the review process, of course, will vary from subject to subject into reasons why rejections may, may occur. Um, it, it really is, could be many factors. But do you know what? One of the main reasons that a paper you know, has a problem in the publishing process is because the author submits the wrong version of their article. Everyone on this call will be writing articles either for conferences or for submission to, to publishers. You will probably have several versions of your article. Um, perversely, one of the reasons that articles get rejected is because it was the wrong version that was submitted. So please, please do keep a very close eye on your article. The, journey your article is on um, and after getting any feedback um, make sure that you submit the one that you want to submit. Um, I know that sounds unlikely but that is often um, the case. How many steps are there in the review process? Um, well after finding a reviewer um, there's obviously a process of communication with two maybe three reviewers um, I think I spelled out the review process a little bit in my slides. I don't know if anything I missed out on the RSF team. Did I miss out anything in the steps of the review process? Was there any steps in my slides that perhaps didn't um, get amplified enough? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, there is uh, one process that it should be uh, uh, through undergone our scientific process, Barry. So yeah, in the slide. So it, it should be a process, an initial process, uh, before submitted into F1000 research, uh, if, uh, if submit into our gateway. So it should be uh, the recommendation letter from RSF and should be undergone for uh, RSF uh, scientific forum like that. Okay, and, thank you. Yes, very good point. Okay, uh, Barry, and for last one, uh, there is somebody asking, do you, uh, do you uh, offer a PC waiver to publish in open access under Taylor and Francis? And if there's any, what is the criteria? I don't believe we do for the RSF gateway, um, not that I'm aware of. I mean, someone from the RSF team can confirm. I don't think we have any waivers through on this gateway. Ah, I see, I see. Okay. Is that right? I don't think so. Yeah, 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 I share. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I don't think there is an APC waiver too. No. And also if, uh, if somebody has a, a problem with a publisher from Taylor and Francis, do you have any recommend website to contact with? Like this is a, a people who already published under CRC, but uh, he is, she is not uh, assured that this is open access as she cannot see the uh, 
she can see the paper, but uh, nobody can see his paper. So okay. um, CRC is CRC Press is our book imprint, book publisher that focuses on science, technology, medicine, and some other subjects. So um, CRC, to my knowledge, doesn't have any open access books. We are working on open access books where a fee is paid in advance and the book is then made available as an ebook free of charge. But very, very few books have followed that route yet. It's different to journal publishing where open access is, um, I would guess it's up to 20% of all articles are now published open access. Maybe it's 30%. I'm not familiar with the latest statistics. So if the, if the query is about a CRC press article, it sounds like it may be an article in a book or a conference proceedings. Without knowing the details, I can't really comment further. So I just think there may be a misunderstanding about where the, where the article has been published. That's a possibility. Oh, okay, I see, I see. So forgive me for not being able to answer that. Okay, okay, okay. I see. So that's all uh, our question uh, and our discussion uh, for today. Maybe, uh, Barry, would you like to add some closing remark? Well, um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, again, um, I'm not quite sure how many people on the call, um, however many there are, and wherever you are based, um, this useful. Um, the RSF F1000 Gateway is a very innovative um, new venture. Um, every new venture has, has many challenges and expectations um, are, are different around the world. I've lived in Singapore as I say, for 30 years and set up offices in, in, in many countries. And I know that the ecosystems, the scholarly ecosystem in, in Japan, in Malaysia, in Thailand, um, in Indonesia, every ecosystem is a little bit different. Um, but what I see through open access publishing is really some of the barriers being removed. Um, not only the barrier in terms of paywalls, um, yes, there's still article publishing charges. There must still be a, a cost to the process. Um, hopefully your funder can help you with that. But I do see this as a way of breaking down barriers, being much more inclusive, much more diverse. And I think science, research, the scholarly community will be the long-term winners with this kind of innovative publishing platform. So thank you, all the research synergy team, for, for, for joining us on this journey. And um, there's lots of opportunities, I think, to help scholars around Asia Pacific, in South Asia, in Africa, we can help scholars around the world. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Barry, for your lecture today. This is uh, indeed very valuable for all us, for all of us. And for your information, for all the participants, uh, please get in touch with Research Synergy team. We are available in the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. With this is our uh, address, and also uh, all of you can contact us for more synergy in the future here. And also, we also have our website, presetsynergy.org. And for lecture for today's session, will be available in the YouTube Research Synergy today. Okay, thank you very much once again for Mary. And thank you very much for all the participants uh, for the E certificate will be available in your email. So I'm Asri. Uh, thank you for today's session. So I will end uh, this uh, lecture session. Thank you once again. Uh, bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Should I stay on the line? Thank you. Quick chat. Sure, sure, sure. No problem. I'll, I'll stay on the line just for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everyone, uh, you, you may leave. Uh, the session is already end now.
maybe not. I see there's lots of people still on the call, so maybe. I just want to say thank you very much for the opportunity again. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. We also yeah. thank, uh, actually, uh, by synergizing with Tyler and Francis, uh, we learned uh, many things about the publication process itself. Sure. Thank you so much, Barry. Thank you. And, uh, so much. I, I just want to say thank you again, um, yeah. Patty. That you know, this is this is terrific. I'm, I'm um, so able to do this, and Sandy, thank you for you know all the support. Um, so. Yeah, I'm here for you if you need someone in the time zone to give a presentation. Um, I just need lots of notice because I've got quite a busy schedule and um, I probably will be taking some holiday in September, October too. So I will be probably be in England for a few weeks. Oh, I see. okay. <laughs> but um, if, I, if I have lots of notice, I'm happy to support you. Oh, okay. So, so you're, you're also handling broad uh publication? Yes, everything. Taylor and Francis, Routledge, CRC, helping with the F1000. Um, I'm having conversations around other platforms with uh, people like NSTDA in Thailand and Hong Kong Grants Council and ASTAR in Singapore. So there's lots of opportunities for research platforms um, and obviously publishing, you know, setting up book series and, and even journals. Occasionally, a new journal does get launched just occasionally. So yeah, my work covers editorial, sales, marketing, and running offices. Oh, okay. And health and safety. Yeah, yeah, health and safety for you too, Barry. Yes, okay, well, thank you very much, ladies. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, sure. So do we. Okay. okay. Uh, time, I can see. Yeah. yeah. So, Ani, I will uh, end this session. Yes, okay, Bye. please end the session. Thank yeah, you. Okay, thank you. Bye. See you. Bye.